So I haven't played a Call of Duty game since like Cold War when I first got my PS5. And before that, I think it was like World War on the PS4. And before that, I think it was the PS3. I can't even remember. And when I did play Black Ops Cold War, I remember thinking, it's been four hours. But for some reason, I accidentally bought Call of Duty Black Ops 6 just because the campaign actually looked quite good. And I know I've said numerous times in the past that I would never buy a Call of Duty game. I do not regret buying this game. The campaign I enjoyed so damn much. The gunplay was exciting. It was epic. <laughs> There were so many different weapons and guns. It literally felt like I was playing a 007 game with some of these mission designs. Lovely. I like the way some of the missions implemented the addictiveness of zombies whilst keeping it realistic as it can be. The character models and graphics were beautiful. And of course, the zombies were so addictive. I even just love playing it on my own. So this will be my review for the campaign and zombies of Black Ops 6. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, she's gonna get a taste of her own medicine. Watch this. Okay, which one is the scare button? I hadn't even played Black Ops 2 or I can't remember and I can't even really remember Cold War. I do recommend going back to those two games if you want to know more about the characters and the storyline and just have a better understanding overall. At least play Cold War. Now the campaign took me around eight hours to complete which to be honest I was actually quite surprised and pleased it was at least eight hours long. I've said many times before I don't mind shorter games as long as I've had a good time within those eight hours but for me a game needs to be around 10 hours long to feel like I've got my money's worth. Now, I know this was only eight hours in comparison, but the fact that you get zombies with it and a multiplayer, I'm not going to really talk about the multiplayer. I just feel like there's hours and hours of fun to be had with that. The multiplayer, as I've said, I don't care. Even if you haven't played the previous games, you can still get to grips with the story as it follows the story of Troy Marshall and Frank Woods as they assemble a team of agents to hunt down the Pantheon, a paramilitary group that intends to discredit and replace the current director of the CIA. It just means that the CIA has been compromised and you're trying to find out who the hell it is. The you know CIA is compromised. Oh, it's the CIA me. is compromised. I'm just a guy. You expect us what? to believe that? Hey, Jane, you want to tape his mouth shut for me? Yes. Wait, I got a message for Woods. Oh, yeah? Bishop takes Brook. Now, the campaign felt like a 007 game. That is what I'm comparing it to, a 007 game. It's pretty predictable when it comes to the story. And I was like, oh, I wonder if that person's bad. It was pretty obvious, but still, it was so exciting and just a hell of a lot of action. This over the top. Get ready. Okay, second. Boy. That escalated quickly. The shooting just makes you feel so good. And it is no different with this. I just wish they put so much more effort into the campaigns as they did the damn multiplayer. Early on in the game, I love it when you eventually have your small team and you have your base, which you can roam around. And oh my gosh, I was blown away by the graphics of the environments. The character models look incredible. Just what we found in Atlas Files. An assassin from one of Avalon's crime factions, the Guild. Always serving up the top yeah, I'm probably going to die. Bullshit. You get to roam around a little, you can explore the house, and it looks very, very detailed. And this is essentially your safe house. And what is great about upgrading your safe house is that you get to make your playstyle a little more personalized. You can upgrade your training area, that will be like upgrading your health, your stamina. You can also upgrade your gear station to improve things like adding more armor slots, increasing adrenaline stims improving your knives and you get your weapons bench and you get upgrades like picking up more dropped ammo or moving faster when using heavy ammo you even find some safes in the rooms you have to actually do a bit of exploration and detective work to get the combination yeah i think i tried to just look online i was just a bit like yeah can't be doing that it's a bit hard with all this said when it That's came to I the damn SMG. missions when when the shooting started it was just so much fun the adrenaline it was exciting <laughs> Ooh. 
Damn it, I'm The gunplay in every mission is super sweet when shit goes down and you have to be on point with hiding behind cover, going prone, which I love. And I feel like in this game, the NPCs were actually clever. They didn't feel brain dead, unlike other Call of Duty games in the past. When I was going into a certain level and I had my silencer and my pistol, that's when I felt like 007. And you could choose whether to go in silent or whether to just go guns blazing. Like I died a few times, don't get me wrong. But then I realized, I was like, you know what? Let's go in silent and see if it makes a difference. And it's just so much more rewarding. It felt so good to take out about six, seven, eight people without being noticed. This is when it felt like a 007 game. Access to the bell tower is on the second floor behind the locked door. Damn it. Got him. Got him. Oh my gosh, that was close. That we need to do this loud or quiet. That sound should come in handy. Nice and quiet. Keep it up. You better start talking. They're definitely gonna see me now, surely. Don't get me wrong, you have the epicness and the over-the-top scenes and action, even the bit where they're escaping on the motorbikes. And I love the way they mention The Great Escape. If you haven't seen that film with Steve McQueen, what a film. I remember watching that with my dad, and that is a very sad film. It's over-the-top. It's Call of Duty, but it's, it's just epic. It's just so good. You guys see The Great Escape? Yeah, you didn't make it <laughs> out. That's a great we film will. if you've never seen that. If we can, Steve I'll McQueen. Gun Keep them off me! <laughs> Shoot them. Now, I surprised myself with most of these missions. Yes, I died quite a bit in certain missions. I have to say, I would be the worst CIA agent ever because I remember I was recording this gameplay and I was uh, I had to sniper someone, but getting into the position of this, you know, I took out people quietly. I got to the roof quietly and I was trying to find this damn big boss and I was looking at the wrong person. I was just so dumb. I was like, that wasn't even the person, but I, m I managed to mess that up a couple of times. That's him. That's him there. <laughs> Oh my gosh, here we go. Did I get him? Didn't I get him? Where is he? What do you mean, Yannick? I, I killed him. Did I kill him? <laughs> And even though it's a grounded campaign because it's set in like 1991, I love the fact that they implemented aspects of, say, zombies in the campaign missions. It's not spoilers, but I love at some point in the campaign, you get exposed to some sort of gas and it makes you hallucinate. And then you're not sure if this is in your head, but the enemies start turning into zombies. And I just love this bit in the game. This was so damn exciting. You had this one level, you'd have these zombies come at you and a big boss in the end of it. But when you turn away, these mannequins, would basically start following you and it was just it was so creative well i thought it was anyway that just made me want to get into the zombies and of course at the end of the campaign it's a cool ending and also they keep it open so that there's going to be many many continuations of this story i feel like i need to go back and play those campaigns i thoroughly enjoyed this campaign obviously i would want it to be longer but the fact that i can play it again i'm happy about that saying that there isn't a new game plus in the campaign and i haven't actually fully upgraded my upgrades that i can do back in the work base what i've seen online and if i'm correct is that you can choose what level to start on you can replay certain missions and you can just start from the very beginning and then you can just continue the story as you go along and you can just continue your upgrades saying that if you're someone like me who hates the multiplayer aspect of call of duty i really do wish they would sell the campaign separately rather than with the multiplayer and the zombies a lot more people that are used to love the campaigns if it's good enough i think a lot more people would actually buy the game the game wasn't like 60 70 pounds for me 
mean, I think I bought it for like £57. It's still expensive, don't get me wrong. But if it was 70 I don't think I would get this game. But because it was like 58 and I really wanted to play it for the campaign and the zombies, I felt like I got my money's worth. I feel like that's something they should do is just sell the campaign online separately. If you are someone like myself who loves zombies and who loves just campaign modes and you're not much of a multiplayer, you will find value in this game if you can get it cheaper or even if you get it at the price that I got it at, I guess. It all depends on what, how much money you have. I'm so happy I bought this game. I can't believe I'm saying that for a Call of Duty game. I haven't touched the multiplayer aspect. I think I've actually played it once and I hated it. It was just dying and dying and trying again. I just can't get to grips with the multiplayer. I did play a few games of zombies. I've only done one level of zombies and I also want to just explore and just find out if I can get to know the level as much as I can. You start off with the damn handgun and then I managed to get a couple of weapons that I loved and then I managed to upgrade them to make them stronger and oh my gosh the gunplay when these zombies are coming at you it was so satisfying <laughs> Requiem, I am all too familiar with your sword. And even when I played with one of my friends, it was even more fun. If you're an old school like me with the PS3, I'm telling you, you're gonna love this. I can see myself going back to this over and over again with friends. I want to try the campaign again. Hopefully I can do the mission select, upgrade my weapons because I'd rather just play the campaign again. Don't like rating games out of 10 only because it can be subjective. But if I had to give this out of 10, I would probably give this an 8 or a 9 out of 10. I'm gonna go with an 8 out of 10 for this i thoroughly enjoyed this one what do you think about this video about my review of call of duty black ops 6 have you bought it will you buy it are you just not interested drop your thoughts in the comments and let me know let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video new ps5 games out in november and december shout out to thyla braun as i see it the general interest in games are for vr2 besides black myth everything else seems at least not worth the money so i'll stick with old releases as many of us do thank you for the comment and yeah i have to say november and december there's not a lot of games big big games which i'm actually happy there's a couple of vr2 games or 23 vr2 which i'm excited about haven't bought them yet because i have a massive backlog there are a couple like the stellar blade dlc the physical edition of black myth wukong which i'm gonna buy and yeah you can say it's just not as exciting through the end of the year i'm actually glad i don't know about you but i actually am enjoying it because i'm actually looking to platinum a few games i've just got my eighth platinum trophy and i'm on to my ninth I'm nearly there with Spider-Man Remastered and I feel like I just want to go back to older games, enjoy them, go back with the backlog. I've just spent money on a damn monitor and it's a lot of money and they're going to have to pay that off. And I'm looking at that PS5 Pro thinking that would be an, an investment for a video. I better not. I, I better not buy that. Uh, that would be really stupid. You've got a mortgage to pay. I forgot how good games are like Miles Morales. I forgot they're just so good. Yeah, we're just going to have to wait till 2025. Damn! <laughs> 2025. Jesus, man. I'll see you in the next video.